All right. In this video, we're going to look at the uh, final exam that was given to the 11 o'clock section of the class, the computer part. Of it. <clears throat> Let's do the easier questions first. Most people got these, the syntax errors. Triangle. So the triangle function looks like this. This is the one that was supposed to print a triangle. The thing to do is you could look at the code, but the thing to do here is just try to compile it. <clears throat> try to compile it says error. This says line 26. H was not declared. Go down to line 26. Here is H, and it says it was not declared. Then we want to go and look where H was declared. That's up here, and you see that there's a capital H. We need to change that to be a lowercase h, or change this to be an uppercase h, and this to be an uppercase h. All right, so that's without even understanding what the rest of the program is doing. You can still fix that error. <coughs> there it is. I'll go ahead and change that back to the way it was, so you can remember that. Okay, that's the triangle. Next one was alphabet. There it is. Again, first thing to do is just try to compile it. And look at the error. <clears throat> I was not declared in this scope. <clears throat> so there's line 7 that was talking about, line 8 that I was talking about. And it's the same thing. You go back and look where it was declared. There's a capital I. It's the same problem. And there it is. You would also want to run it to make sure it works. I'll change it back to the way it was. Works. So you can remember. Next one was password. Again, we'll just go ahead and that out. First error it complains about is line 8, expected uh, parentheses before the not. And then there's some other errors, but you go to the first one, <clears throat> line 8. So it says it expected a parenthesis before. So it was expecting that. You could do that. But that's going to cause other problems. It doesn't really know how to solve the problem. It just knows that when it sees this, it's confused. All right, what this is supposed to be doing now, this one, it actually helps to know what it's doing. Um, this is asking for a number, and it'll keep asking as long as they haven't gotten the right number. There's your C out. There's your C in. This user input is going to be some number. And this is supposed to be checking as long as user input is not equal to the correct. So this not is supposed to be not equal. That's the reason. A not just by itself is um, means not for a Boolean condition. It doesn't mean not equal. All right, so we go back and try this. We could run it to make sure it works, but it does. Right, so that's the way it was. Now let's go back to the first problem. First problem here. Um, wanted us to print this stuff. Should ask the user if they want to hear a song. If they say yes, it should print this. Uh, let's call this never. Stuff that's going to get printed was this. I'll just leave that there for a second. We're supposed to say hello. Hello, do you want to hear a song? I'll say yes, no is what they're supposed to type. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get their answer. I need to have something to read that into. Check if answer is yes. If it 
is, then I want to print this stuff. And I'll print it like this. Okay, that's it. Uh, I something if they want to hear the song, get their answer. If the answer is yes, <coughs> then print it out. I didn't say why. There it is. Okay. Second part is number two. Make them say yes or no. Alright, so let me call this number two. They're supposed to say yes or no. You can make this yes. But before we get to that point, we want to make sure that the answer is yes. So we want to have something like all well, answer is not equal to yes and answer is not equal to no. Okay, so we want to have something like that, but this is the thing we want to repeat. It's actually easiest to do this with a do while. Looks like this. Have to put a semicolon there. Okay, so I'm doing all the stuff inside of here as long as the answer is not yes and is not no. I'll just keep asking. Um, if I compile it like this, I'll get a message. Let's just do that. The answer was not declared on line 10. That's right here. Complaining it doesn't know about answer. That's because I declared it inside the curly braces. If I want to use the answer outside the curly braces, I have to declare it outside the curly braces. Okay, so then this would be the final thing. And if I wanted to, I could put another message in here. If they didn't say yes or they didn't say no, then tell them, hey, cut it out. But I don't think the problem required that. Okay, that's never two. Next question. Ask the user if they want to hear more. If they say yes, print the song again. Okay, so after, if they say yes, if they want to hear it, then I should ask again. going to do something like this here. All right. So first I ask them if they want to hear a song. Keep keep asking as long as they haven't answered correctly. If they do want to hear a song, then I play the song and then ask if they want to hear more. So this answer will be um, yes or no down here. And at this point, um, if they say yes, then it would get down here and it would be done. I want it to repeat, so that looks like a, like a while loop. So I'll say here, in this case, I can put the while up here. As long as the answer is yes, <clears throat> and then I don't need this if anymore. As long as the answer is yes, I'm going to print the song and then ask if they want to hear it again. If they say no right here, it won't do this at all. If they say yes, I'll print it, and then this will update the, the value of their answer. So this is they call that number three. Yes. Okay. 
yes, yes. And if I say something here, it's going to keep asking me when I say no, it's done. I'm going to change this back to number two. And what was that? We had a if here. Not much difference between number two and number three. But basically, we have that changes into a while, and then we ask the question again. All right, so that was number two. Let me turn back to number three. Here's number three. All right, let's go back to the next question. This one was making it so that we print a history. Number four. And I'm going to do files here. All right, so if we're going to do files. We need upstream. And so I wanted to have a transcript. That means every time the program says something, put it in the transcript. And every time the user says something, that's a CN, also put that in the transcript. First thing is to open the file. So I'll do an OF stream, that's output file stream. I'll call it out file. And then you put in parentheses um, in quotes the name of the file. I'm going to call it history.txt. And then when everything's all done, I need to close that file. First of all, every time there's a C out, I will go ahead and write that out to the out file as well. And one way to make this slightly easier to read is um, I'll make a variable. So here, instead of doing just the C out, I'll save what I'm going to say, and then I'll do C out. And I'll also do out file. Okay, so then I only have to have the string there once. Here's another C out, so I'll do output equals this, and I need to get rid of that end line. That's not okay to set a string equal to that. Each time there, after I set what I'm going to do, I output it to C out, and I also do the out file. Here I have another one of these. Okay, that's the first thing, and you can compile it and run it like that. The other thing is, every time there's a C in, I should output what they said. And they probably typed enter, so I should put a new line in. There's another C in down here. So our whole program now, first we ask them, do they want to hear a song? Make sure they said yes or no. As long as they said yes, we print the song and we ask them again. Every time we see out something, we also put it out to our file. Let's try this out. Change it back to a lowercase. That's what I used everywhere. It's step four down here. Just have to make them consistent. Okay, 
so now I should be able to go and look at history.txt. And that has stuff that I printed and the stuff that I typed. And that is the end of the exam. How long did it take us? 15 minutes or something? Okay.